bien, ya. Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Hereditary. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Annie and her family hold a funeral for her mother, who just died a few days ago. She delivers the eulogy at her mother's service, saying her mother seldom expressed her real feelings to people, even her kids. Annie, as her eldest daughter, knows nothing about who her friends were or what she did. Her mother loved to wear an oddly shaped necklace. She never took it off her neck till the end of her life, but she passed it to Annie and demanded her wear it too. When the son Peter was born, Annie's mother asks several times to let Peter move to stay with her. Not knowing why, Annie refused her erratic mother and thinks that she was indifferent toward her in the past, so she believes that her mother couldn't take good care of Peter. However, when the little daughter Charlie was born, Annie felt obliged and accepted her mother's request to care for Charlie. But one year later, her mother died and the family reunite and live together. When arranging her mother's belongings, Annie finds a letter written to her by her mother, asking for her forgiveness for all the things that she could not tell, and telling Annie to try not to be sad about her losses, because she'll see in the end that they were worth it, and that their sacrifice will pale next to the rewards. Annie is totally confused by the so-called secrets, sacrifice, and even the rewards mentioned in the letter. The letter sounds mysterious, just as her mother had been in the past decades. Her little daughter, Charlie, is introverted, and even seems dull. The favorite place for her is the small attic. She often visits there and locks herself up all day long. She behaves so weird and even cuts off a dove's head and plays around with it as a toy. Someday, Charlie follows an odd beam of glowing light and comes into the treehouse. But after walking out of the treehouse, she wears an empty look holding the dove's head. One evening, Annie tells her husband that she's going to see a movie, but she actually attends a grief support gathering where people release their grief and counsel one another. Time flies by. It seems the family's life returns to normal. One day, Peter asks if he can drive his mother's car to attend a classmate's party. Annie is busy sculpting miniature dioramas in her workshop. She then asks Peter to take his sister to go with them together. So Peter reluctantly takes his sister and drives to the party. At the party, Peter blows off his shitty sister and smokes with his friends. The introvert Charlie is left alone without anything to do. She takes some cake, but ends up being allergic to some nut, causing her to suffocate. Charlie approaches her brother for help. Peter carries her to the car and rushes her to the hospital. On the way, Charlie tries to breathe some fresh air, so she sticks her head out of the window. But right at that time, Peter swerves to avoid a deer lying on the road, and the car hits a utility pole when he slams on the brakes. Shocked at what he has done, Peter tries several times, but still dares not see the rear mirror to check what happened to his sister. Instead, he drives home in a calm daze. The next day, Charlie's head is found on the road, full of crawling ants. Annie kneels on the floor and wails. Grief seizes the family again because of Charlie's tragic death. Feeling guilty, Peter can't forgive himself for his sister's death. When Annie feels better, she tells her husband that she's going to watch a movie. Actually, she drives to the grief support gathering again, but she turns around upon arrival. Before she can leave, a fellow group member, seemingly a warm-hearted woman, notices Annie and stops her for a talk. She asks how Annie has been doing since her mother's death. Knowing Annie's sobbing about the loss of her daughter, Warm-Hearted invites Annie for a drink. When Annie refuses her, Warm-Hearted confides to Annie about the loss of her own son and grandson, who died of drowning four months ago. Annie soon feels closer to the woman because of the similar misery. Warm-hearted writes Annie her address and says she will always be available when Annie feels sad and lonely. Later, Annie cannot focus on her sculpting due to the incidents, so she follows the address and pays a visit to Warm-hearted. When Annie comes in, she notices that the doormat has the same pattern as her mother's favorite. She feels genial and confides to Warm-hearted, telling her she often sleepwalks. One time when sleepwalking, she even lit a match, trying to set fire to her son's bed. Peter woke up and thought she was going to kill him, and the incident estranged her son from her. Since then, they have quarreled many times because of trifles. A few days later, Annie bumps into Warm-Hearted at a store. Warm-Hearted looks excited and says she has gone through it completely. She explains to Annie that a psychic has taught her how to communicate with her late grandson. Annie is suspicious of psychics, but Warm-Hearted persuades Annie to her home to witness how it works. So Annie comes to her house later. Warm-hearted conjures her late grandson. Annie is shocked to see the deceased moving the cup and writing on the toy blackboard. 
Warmhearted then teaches Annie how to conduct conjuring and gives her a copy of the cryptic incantation written in an unknown language. She tells Annie to recite the cryptic incantation just according to the syllables, and during the summoning, her whole family must stay around. When she returns home, Annie does not summon the dead, as she never believed in psychics before. But she tosses and turns and cannot fall asleep, so she decides to give it a try, hoping her late daughter will show up. She wakes her husband and her son up from their sound sleep, and the family stand hand in hand to conjure Charlie. Everyone's heart beats fast when the cup on the table moves. Annie picks up Charlie's old sketchbook and asks the dead to draw something. Peter is so scared that he almost suffocates, so the husband asks her to stop. As they argue whether to continue the sounds or not, the candle flame suddenly shoots high. Annie closes her eyes, lowers her head, and makes gruesome roars. When she opens her eyes, she speaks in a little girl's voice, seemingly possessed by her late daughter. The husband snaps Annie out of her trance by dousing her with water. Annie is completely unaware of what happened, and Peter is frightened and cries. After the seance, Peter becomes absent-minded. During school, Peter sees the same odd glowing light that Charlie previously saw. Following the light, he goes out of the classroom. Peter has a nightmare that someone is madly plucking his hair. He wakes up in fright, only to see his mother standing in front of his bed. This makes Peter even more sure that his mother is going to attack him. Annie is unable to explain her sleepwalk, and the estrangement gets worse. The husband calls Annie and blames her on the phone. Annie becomes angry and destroys all the dioramas that she has made for months. What's more, the couple become cold to each other. In Charlie's old sketchbook, there is a drawing of Peter's face on each page with a cross on each eye. Sensing that it must do her son bad, Annie throws the sketchbook into the fireplace. As the sketchbook burns, Annie's arm mirrors and catches fire. No matter how she tries, she cannot put out the fire on her arm. But as she rescues the book, the fire on her arm dies down suddenly. It seems that Annie's life is connected to the sketchbook, so she gives up destroying it. Annie returns to Warmhearted for help the other day. She knocks at the door, but no one replies. Inside the house, an altar for sacrifice has been set up. From a photo of Peter, she suddenly realizes that the sacrifice is nobody else but her son. She confirms that when recalling Warmhearted's over-enthusiasm toward her and the same pattern of the doormat, Annie hurries back home and rummages through her late mother's remains. She reads her mother's diary and is terrified to learn that the ritual she conducted did not conjure her late daughter, but instead invoked Payman, King of Hell. Annie also finds photos of her mother with Warmhearted, revealing that her mother and Warmhearted knew each other very well. More photos tell Annie they were in the same coven, and her mother was the chief, addressed as their queen. Later, Annie smells the stink and goes up to the attic, where she discovers the headless corpse of her late mother. On the other side, Peter is possessed in class, suffocating. He trembles with his face twisting, and he falls onto the desk, breaking his nose. Then he snaps out of the trance, with cries of terror and pain. Later, when the husband brings Peter home, Annie tells her husband in a trembling voice about the headless corpse she found. So he comes up to the attic, but soon runs down with a scream. Annie stops his efforts to call the police, telling him the family are cursed by the coven. She begs her husband to burn Charlie's old sketchbook to save Peter, regardless of her connection to it, as she's willing to die for her beloved son. The husband hesitates, thinking his wife is mentally sick. So Annie throws the sketchbook into the fire by herself, even though she thinks that doing so, she will be burned to death. However, it's the husband who is spontaneously on fire. Annie watches him die, transfixed with shock. Peter wakes up, only to find his father's charred corpse, and his mother attached to the ceiling like a spider. What's more, a hormone greasy guy stands by the door, shamelessly naked, without wearing any hormone bag. Annie jumps down from the ceiling and chases Peter madly. Peter runs to the attic and takes away the ladder. But when he looks up, he sees his mother hanged in the ceiling, and she's sawing her own neck off. Peter jumps out of the window in great horror. His head hits the ground, which knocks him out. He rises when the odd glowing light hovers around him. Peter wanders like a ghost and follows his mother's floating corpse into the treehouse where a special ritual is performed. There he sees several headless corpses kneeling down. Behind them are an assembly of naked devil worshippers. The photo of Peter's grandmother is hanging on the wall. Apparently, she is their queen. It turns out they are the coven worshipping payment and they are finding the next vessel for their god. So Peter is crowned by them. It's revealed that at first, Payman was attached to the daughter Charlie, 
but Charlie seems too weak for the possession, so they have to find the new vessel for payment, who's in favor of a robust male. That's why the coven replaces her with Peter. The movie ends with the worshippers finishing their ritual and hailing their revived King of Hell. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.